Welcome to the Parkinson Network Quick Summary. This summary is about the future of treatments for Parkinson's disease, a webinar delivered by Jason Kroll in January 2022. The original video is 24 minutes long. I really liked it because it was current, well-researched, and had great graphics. I think you'll like it too. Now on to the summary. If you ask people to explain what Parkinson's disease is, they could probably spell it. Some might say it has to do with the brain or central nervous system. Others might rely upon the symptoms it describes or presents. For many people, if you ask eight different people, you get eight different definitions. It's part of the creative process that we all have in coming to terms with Parkinson's. We may land on the idea that it's something that our neurologist treats. That in turn brings us back to the idea, just what is the future of treatments for Parkinson's disease? Let's get into it. Kroll begins with a brief overview of the various drugs that are used to treat Parkinson's. He also lets us know that right now there are over 3,000 studies in clinical trials looking at what could be done for PD. And then fortunately, he breaks down this complexity into two key categories. The first is how to treat the motor symptoms of Parkinson's. The second is how to slow down or halt the progression of Parkinson's. Kroll starts with a key question how do we improve the delivery of L-dopa or dopamine? He explains the problem is not just how much L-dopa or dopamine gets delivered, but when and how often. One intriguing solution is the accordion pill. That's right, it doesn't play music, but at time releases the dopamine for when we need it. Another method for delivering dopamine when we need it is the pump, much like the insulin pump that diabetics use. He then explores the new class of rescue treatments, things like Embresia, an inhaled powder, or apomorphine, which is dissolved under the tongue. They provide brief respite from the symptoms of Parkinson's. Now we get to the $64,000 question, or in today's dollars, a half million dollars. And that is, how can we modify Parkinson's disease with new drugs or treatments? To answer that question, Kroll explains the difference between healthy brain cells and Parkinson's brain cells, so that we have a little bit more insight. In that, he shows us how alpha-synuclein clumps and gathers and causes problems that leads to Parkinson's symptoms. So how do we remove it? The answer probably lies in one of the many clinical trials being studied about inflammation, gene therapy, the LARC2 gene, and everything else. How do we take out the trash that starts to accumulate in otherwise healthy cells? That's part of the answer to the future of Parkinson's treatments. So what are the takeaways? First of all, there are treatments for symptoms and they're getting better all the time. And there are treatments to alter the disease's course. If you want to learn more, check out some of the resources listed here and in the description below. We hope this has informed you and you enjoy it.